Good morning, everybody. My name is Bonnie Meyer, and I'm the pastor here at Gloria Day. And we're really glad that you're with us this morning. We got a great service. It's going to be real short today because I'm going to be serving also at our vacation uh, service place that we have called Breezy Point Chapel. So I got to leave a little bit early so that I can get there at 10 o'clock. But we're really happy that you're with us today. If you ever have any questions, please text us or call us or or some, write something in the, in the in the notes underneath, and we'll be happy to respond to you. Thanks for worshiping with us today. morning everybody welcome in the name of Jesus it's good to see you today I just kind of let you know that there is no communion today because I'm going to be serving Breezy Point Chapel those of you who don't know what Breezy Point Chapel is it's a, a little church that we have over on Breezy Point <laughs> duh right and it's that way and I can't I got and um, we serve we do we start on Memorial Day and we end on Labor Day and Pastors take turns doing this. When I was working for our district office, they would ask us to, to do that, and, and I've kind of kept that tradition up. And uh, to, so I'm going to be, Amy and I are going to be sprinting. And it all depends. If I get done early enough, um, I may stay and greet a few people, but most likely that last service, I'm going to sneak out that door and go. But make sure that you agree. We have a lot of guests here, especially a lot of Texans. Raise your hand, Texans back there. And yeah, they're very good. Uh, I can't remember there was other, other nationalities back there too. But, but, and we're happy to have them. Make sure that everybody feels really welcome here. And, and um, we have a couple things. We, do we have our announcement slides ready? Okay, very good. Let's look at one. Oh, baby bottle campaign. I haven't been talking about this enough. We have a baby bottle campaign. Please take some, there's some left over there. Take them home with you and fill it with your change. And it's got to be back by next week. And I'm sure if, it's, if you wait a little bit longer, they'll still take it. We need to support these institutions. This is Lakes Area Pregnancy. They help people who are thinking about uh, having an abortion. They, 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 they're very supportive to pregnant women and, and children. We need to really support these strongly, especially in the state of Minnesota where they've made abortion illegal all the way up to the time of birth. We need to counteract that with our support, material, prayerful, emotional, all the support we can get to help every, save every baby that we can. So this is really well worth it. And if you, it's easy. If you guys are going for your coffee in the morning and you go through the drive-thru or something and they give you change back, stick that change in there. And if you, if you really feel, want to feel guilty, stick some dollar bills in there too, all right? But this is really an important thing. There's more in the back there. And if there's anything left, we'll still donate to this. This is a very good program to do and it's, it's local. Number two, time and talent survey. There is a time and talent survey sheet on the, on the, on the uh, usher's table back there, please take that and fill that out and turn it into the box, please. And uh, is there anything else? Birthday. Oh, I got a couple things I need to tell you, too. I, um, okay. We are going to be starting a sermon series July 9th called We Are Your Neighbor. And we're going to be, it's going to be for five weeks and it's going to culminate on August 7th, which is a Monday, I think, where we're going to have a block party vacation Bible school where we do the story of the Good Samaritan and we have games and prizes and food. It's going to be a block party. It's going to be fun. But we're going to have uh, our sermon series going to be on who is our neighbor? How do we treat those who are our neighbors, our friends, who, and uh, those who are maybe different than us, who are outcasts, those who are hurting? How can we help and care for one another? It's going to be a five-week ser series. I got a new, I got a new uh, bracelets that are coming out our, for our, our, our wristbands that are coming out. It's called We Are Your Neighbor. And on the inside, it'll also say um, today is a new day, which is kind of our also our theme too. But we'll be having those available. Also, if we are going to be having two things. On July 3rd, for, for fireworks, we're going to be having a Freezy Pop booth. We're going to give away Freezy Pops for free. And um, um, so if you want to help out with that, um, 
Adam Rupp, Rudd Rud right there, Adam Rudd, back there on the, on, the, on the screen, he is in charge of it. If you are happy and friendly, <laughs> we always love it. Please talk to Adam, and we're going to be doing that. We've already bought, what we got our first thousand free Z-Pops. We're trying to figure out how many we're going to need. And the other thing that's coming up is that we're going to have a float in the Fourth uh, of July parade here. Lanny Fagerstrom, would you raise your hand right there? She is in charge of that. If you would like, you need some help? Sure. All right, talk to... <laughs> Talk to Lanny, and so we're going to probably need some, uh, some things to give away for that as well, some candy and things like that. So maybe we'll have an opportunity to, to, to donate to that as well. Um, that's it. Oh, also one more thing. Gosh, I know. I'm going to talk, talk to you later about that. Birthdays and anniversaries. Birthdays and anniversaries. Yes? We'll 60 years. Happy anniversary. Woohoo! Awesome. Anybody? Yeah. And it's your 50th. And your 50th. Wow. Happy anniversary. <laughs> 110 years between us, to you two. That's interesting. There you go. Anybody? Yeah. It's your birthday today? How many, how many, how many birthday candles? 67. 67. Happy birthday. That's the official retirement age for Social Security now, I hear. So, there you go. All right. Yeah. You're, you're, are you pointing, Jeff? Or are you pointing to someone else? Okay. 51. 51. Woohoo! Does anybody here have under 15 years of marriage? I want to know. Does anybody yet? You and me? <laughs> okay. Okay. A few of us. A few of us. Yeah. Paul was 88 last week. You're 88 last week. Yeah, chairman of our congregation, and yeah, yeah. You crashed a plane once in the in the lake. I remember. I heard all these stories. So, all right, very good. All right, all kinds of things. Anybody else? Am I missing anybody here? Gosh, it's good to see all of you here today. Why don't we stand up, give everybody a really good welcome this morning, and let's get our service started.
name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Sanctify us in your truth. Your word is truth. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. You may be seated. Six, which is my sermon text for today. I will return again to my place until they acknowledge their guilt and seek my face and in their distress earnestly seek me. Come, let us return to the Lord for he has torn us that he may heal us. He has struck us down and he will bind us up. After two days he will revive us. On the third day he will raise us up that we may live before him. Let us know. Let us press on to know the Lord. His going out is sure as the dawn. He, he will come to us as the showers, as the spring rains that water the earth. What shall I do with you, O Ephraim? What shall I do with you, O Judah? Your love is like a morning cloud, like the dew that goes away early, early away. Therefore I have hewn them by the prophets. I have slain them by the words of my mouth, and my judgment goes forth as the light, for I desire steadfast love and not sacrifice, the knowledge of God rather than burnt offerings. This is the word of the Lord. Be to God. Let's honor the Lord Jesus by standing to hear his word in the Gospel of Matthew. As Jesus passed on from there, he saw a man called Matthew sitting at the tax booth, and he said to him, Follow me. And he rose and followed him. And as Jesus reclined at the table in the house, behold, many tax collectors and sinners came and were reclining with Jesus and his disciples. And when the Pharisees saw this, they said to his disciples, Why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? But when he heard it, he said, 
Those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick, go and learn what this means. I desire mercy and not sacrifice, for I came not to call the righteous, but sinners. This is the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. I love to invite the kids to come up here. We're going to talk about a very important word we're going to learn about today. Please have a seat. Oh, how are you guys doing? Guess what? I went fishing on Thursday. We caught fish. Is that good? You are? What lake? Cross Lake sounds like fun. All right, very good. Today I want to teach you about a word that we're going to use in our church service today. Charlie! Hey, come on. Okay. No, you're, you're fine. I just want to teach you a word. I want to teach you a word. The word is called repent. Does anybody know what the word repent means? It means to say, I'm sorry. But it even means more than that. It means I'm going to turn away from danger and turn back to God. So I'm going to do, teach something to you. I want you to all stand up and stand right here by me. Come on over here. All here. Stand up, stand up, stand up. All right. Everybody's got to be right here, right here in this aisle. Right here in this aisle. Okay. I want you guys to walk that way until I tell you to stop. Okay. Ready? Go. Walk that way. Stop! I want you to repent, which means to turn back toward me. <laughs> come on, come this way, come this way, come back. You're coming back to me. That's what the word repent means. It means you're not only, you're sorry for what you've done if it was wrong, but you're not only going to be sorry about it, but you're going to turn back to someone you care for. Like when you're in trouble, you run back to your parents, right? They protect you. When you're in trouble with God, we turn back to him and we know that he loves us and forgives us. So can you pray with me? I got a little prayer here. Dear Jesus, Dear Jesus keep, me always by your side. keep me always by your side. Amen. Thanks for coming up, you guys. Thanks, Charlie. We can do our next hymn.
of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The text for today's message is taken from our Old Testament reading, chapters 5 and 6 in Hosea, which we just heard. <sighs> I can't even watch the news anymore. I can't. I'm done. Last night, but I, I'm, I'm, I'm addicted. I'm addicted to it, but I don't want to watch it anymore. And I, I actually don't watch any of the Fox, CNN, and MSNBC. I don't watch any of it anymore. I still get my news off of different sites. And last night, I'm talking to Nadine, and says, did you hear this one? And she finally went, la, 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 I don't want to hear it. La, 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 la. <laughs> How do we get out of this mess? How do we do it? No matter if you're conservative or liberal, <coughs> you know that there is just something ain't right, right? We get this, something is not right of what's going on in our country, what's going on in our society, and we want it fixed. But how do we get out of the mess? That's the question I wanna talk about today. You know, <laughs> we have to fight to keep sexually explicit material and, and, and pornographic stuff out of the lower parts of the elementary school library, we would like to at least move them up to the top one so maybe that only a sixth grader can reach them. That's how bad it is. I mean, it's like, we this there's some sexually explicit material and, and about transgenderism and things like this. I, I, this is my job to teach my children, not, not the school. So we, we, we deal with that. Um, we're forced to comply. If you work, you're forced to comply with social constructs that you don't even agree with or may have a problem. But if you want to keep a job and keep paying your mortgage, you've got you to gotta submit to those things. Um, you dare not let your children outside alone too long. How many of you just let your children run all day by us? Don't even answer that. We don't, you know, don't do that. We don't do that anymore because of, of what's going on in the world. Gosh, we have families divided. I bet a lot of you have divided families along almost tribal lines, you know, of, of, of well, I believe this and I believe that and I don't want anything to do with you because you believe that. There's all sorts of cultural and moral and and governmental issues that are going on that are dividing us that's exploding our country and how do we get out of this mess i want to talk a little bit about that today by introducing to you to the person of hosea flip the page hosea was a prophet around this 700 bc before christ and that um so that be um 2,700 years ago. And at that time, Israel was divided into two camps. There was Israel, the northern kingdom, and there was Judah, the southern kingdom. Hosea was a prophet for 50 years, seven kings to the northern tribes, and they were being beat on on every side. But it was a very good time of prosperity. The king was really well popular. They had the, about the best prosperity they ever had since King Solomon, but they had a lot of issues. There was a lot of idolatry, a lot of things we're going to get to in a second. So God used I, uh, Hosea for 50 years to preach repentance He's, to Israel. He was called the deathbed prophet. The, well, what a name. Oh, you're, what kind of preacher are you? I'm the deathbed preacher. Because Israel would finally be taken over by the Assyrians conquered and taken into exile and they would never ever come back from it. So he was the deathbed prophet. He saw that happen to them eventually. Now, God used Hosea, he used his life to teach Israel a living kind of children's sermon. He asked, God asked Hosea to marry a prostitute named <coughs> Gomer. Shazam! <laughs> no, not that Gomer, this Gomer. <laughs> Sorry, I just thought, I worked really hard on that joke. 
Her name was Gomer. She was, now you can look at, there's different ways of looking at this. Martin Luther thought, meant, meant, thought it was uh, symbolic. There's a lot of uh, uh, theologians who thought it was real. I'm at those, one of those that believe that this really did happen. And that, that Gomer was a prostitute. And, and, and he married Gomer. He won her over. He married her. Flip the page here. And then she left. And they had three children. And those three children, you can look it up in Hosea, they were named things that were kind of judgments against Israel. It was all highly symbolic. And then this Gomer, who Hosea loved and rescued from prostitution, left and went back to be a prostitute again. And then he won her back. He went out and found her and won her back. And then she ran away again. Flip the page. All of this was a living children's message, so to speak. A living sermon to the people of the northern king, Israel, uh, kingdom called Israel. And Hosea was trying to teach them that a couple things. Is that you have left God and that he's always willing to take you back. But I want to talk about some things because they never got it. Israel never got it. And they were conquered. They were, they were run off by the Assyrians. They were taken out of their land. They separated them so that, so that leaders couldn't be with soldiers. And, and, and they just made them an excellent. They just ended them. They ended them. What are the things that destroyed Israel? Number one. Continued idolatry. By the way, when you watch this, you're going to learn that there's nothing new under the sun. That the Old Testament stuff, the thing that you think happened a long time ago, has nothing to do with us. Open your eyes a little bit. You're going to see that they have the eggs. We, they apply to us today. Idolatry killed Israel. They trusted in their wealth. They had a lot of, op they had a lot of money, a lot of prosperity. And they thought, well, I'm pretty, we're pretty good. We must be, God must be on our side. And so it doesn't matter if I do this or I do that. And there was a lot of idol worship. Baal, the prophet Baal, um, was, was the goddess of, of agriculture and, and, for, and, and food. And then there was another one, Ashtara, which was the goddess of fertility. And they had interesting services at those things, if you can imagine the goddess of fertility. And so they would follow God, the Lord God, Yahweh, but they would also, there was culturally, this was a part of it, so then they, they would follow, worship Baal because everybody was doing it. They worshiped Ashtra because it was, if you're a guy, it was fun. And, it was, and they would do all kinds of things, and they kind of just were sagging and sagging and sagging. This is what killed Israel, number two. The priest's failure to lead, even encouraging idolatry. Well, the priests of the, it would say, everybody's doing it, so why bother? Just go ahead. Don't worry about it. You'll be okay. Well, I can talk about this a little bit later. Israel and Judah hoping in foreign kings. Oh, if we can just make an alliance with Egypt or Assyria, or we can have some people that will protect us and that will be on their side. If we can just manage all this, then everything will be okay. Gosh, this doesn't sound anything like what we're going through today, does it? Just manage these things. Throw this fire. Send this army here. Put these people there. Set the, write this deal with them. Send them cash. We'll be okay. There was no hope as long as they continued in idolatry. They could try to manage all these things. They could try to manage their portfolios. And they could try to, 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 to tame the, the gods of fertility and the gods of agriculture. They thought that was right. They could try to manage their relationship with other entities to keep them from being uh, torn asunder. But as long as they were worshiping other gods, they were in big, big trouble. They needed to repent and turn back to God. That word repent means I'm sorry and run back to God. Go the other way 180 degrees. I want to talk about the path out of this mess. Number one, there's nothing new under the sun. Idolatry is, given, is killing us. 
you may go, well, wait a minute. I'm not putting up a golden calf and worshiping to it. And I'm certainly not going to the temple uh, idolat- or place where there are fertility gods and doing all that. I'm not doing any of that stuff. Well, a god is anything that takes our eyes off of, of the Lord God. Boy, a lot of us worship our 401ks and 403bs and we manage and we, we manage and we worry and we fret and we look at these things and we worry if we have enough money for this or nothing. We do it at church all the time. We, we, the almighty dollar is something that we worship. How about this? How about government? Oh, if we just align with the right leaders, if we just get this person in place, they can fix us. If I just, if he can just take care of, if we get him in and he'll take care of Taiwan, he'll take care of Ukraine. If I get this person, then they'll get, oh, we just, we worship at the throne of politics and we think that that's gonna, that's gonna save us. We worship the news. We align ourselves into tribes. We hurt each other because, and we say bad things about each other because it's all about our tribe that we're in. We worship science. Oh boy, do we worship science. My gosh, you think about that, all the things that we did in the last one, the, the pandemic, that we swore were the right thing to do that we found out didn't matter a thing. We think that the world is 4.7 billion years old, and, and yet, you know, we know a little bit better. Maybe it's a little bit younger than that. God created the world in six 24-hour days. But no, that's what science says. Whether it's the, the scientists or the social scientists, gender is just a construct now. Pfft. Where do they come up with that? I mean, we worship science. We go, well, you got to follow the science. I'm not anti-science. I was a, you know, I went to school for biology. But we can't worship it. Idolatry is killing us. And it's whether it's if anything that takes our focus off of what God has done for us in his son Jesus Christ is killing us. We can blame governments. We can blame leaders. We can, we can blame the the. Uh, Diversity, equity, inclusion, we can, we can blame, you know, school boards, we can blame all these things, but it ultimately comes down back to us. It really does. Because we're never going to be able to fix everything in the world, but if we can just work on ourselves, that's where the change starts. So I'm going to ask you, if you want a path out of this mess, offer yourself, your family, and your congregation to the Lord in repentant prayer. Repent, right? Repent means to say, I'm sorry, to turn away from what's going to hurt you and go the other way. Maybe the one thing that we can do is to acknowledge our own plight, our own sinfulness. And I'm including, I'm not just pointing to you. I struggle with that. And I said your, I wanted to say our. I wanted to say me because I struggle with this the most, like everybody else. The only thing we can do is to say, Lord, my, I have a part of this. I have a part in this whole problem that's going on. And I'm going to ask God to forgive me, to help me turn the other way. I mean, that, that might be a series of small changes in our life. But all those changes go toward turning back to the one to the one who can save us, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who paid for all of our sins on the cross, who will never ever let us go, who will always love us, who will always forgive us. Just like Hosea in the text today who took back his wife again and again after she fell away in the worst way possible, he took her back again and again. That's what God does for us. So he's calling us to repentance. To repent and start at not blaming everybody else, but start at ourselves. Number two, or number three here. Acknowledge your dependence on God to fight temptation and sin. We can't go anywhere. We can't do anything in this world without God's help and strength. The Bible tells us when we're weak, he is strong. I can do anything for him who gives us strength. The Bible says these are, God is pointing us to the fact that we need him. You want to get us out of this mess? We start here in our hearts and we let it leak out toward others. What else do I got up there, Brett? Ask God's forgiveness, restoration, and health. 
Literally ask him, Lord, forgive me my sins. Lord, help me to be a better man. Help me to be a better family man. Help me to be a better pastor to the people at Gloria Day. Help me to be a better citizen of the Pequod and Brainerd Lakes area. Lord, help me to be a witness of your love. And Lord, know that I'm forgiven. Restore me. Give me peace and health and strength again. Have some joy. Because the deal is, God takes us back. I want you to know that maybe that you have been one of those people who have fallen again and again and again. Maybe you're in a downward cycle right now. I want you to know that there is time. There is time that God has won forgiveness for you and he will never ever reject you. He will always take you back. For, repent and believe the good news that God is for you in his son Jesus Christ. Because you know what? Today is a new day and this is how we start getting out of the mess. And that's all I got for today. Amen. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's take our offering. Please also sign the record of fellowship in the inside pew and pass it down. God, Heavenly Father, help us get out of the mess that we've created in this world, in our nation, in our lives. Lord, we come before you humbly, acknowledging our sin and lean, looking to you for, for faith and strength and forgiveness. Lord, change our lives. Keep our eyes fixed on you. Give to us the hope that only you can give. And give us opportunity to tell one more person about this hope that we have in you. Lord, we lift up before you those who need your help, especially for Janine Hulkey's great-grandson, Caleb, who's really struggling with cancer, Lord. According to your good and gracious will, heal his body and give his parents and his family some relief, Lord. Lord, we also pray for my sister-in-law who's dealing with some skin cancer issues, Lord, we pray that according to your good and gracious will, you would bring her healing. And, and, and Lord, keep their eyes always fixed on your promises. Lord, we pray for those whose eyes have turned away from you, who are trying to find hope and, and, and peace through other means. Lord, we pray that you would turn their eyes back to you, that you would lead them to repentance and faith, that you would use us Lord, to reach out to them with your love and forgiveness. 
Lord, all these things we bring to you, praying the prayer you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. I'm going to give you one announcement. You guys can be seated. I am taking off because I'm going to be Amy's playing piano and we always race over there. So, um, so I'm going to take off and for to lead their service at Breezy Point. Thank you so much for coming. We have coffee and cookies upstairs and also downstairs. God go with you.